Blueprints tend to have a reputation of being dirty and unorganized. Touch my and this will most likely be true for your project if you are new to Blueprints. However, just like with writing code, if you follow certain principles and put in some effort, your Blueprints can be very clean and readable. In this video, I will give you 15 tips for keeping your Blueprints organized that I learned over the years. Number 1. Reroute nodes. Reroute nodes allow you to change the flow of your lines. If we connect the line directly, it's going to be hard to see it because it's blocked by a different node. Just double click the line to create a reroute node and drag it into the correct position. You can click the line multiple times to create multiple nodes. Number 2. Sequence node. Here you can see that our nodes take up a lot of horizontal space and also the execution will stop if the cast fails. We can make this a lot more compact by using the sequence node. Even if an is valid check or cast fails, the following branches will still be executed. The branches will be executed in sequence, however everything should still happen on the same frame. Number 3. Use enums and switch cases. Here I created a simple enum with the role of our enemy. If you were to use a branch, which is basically an if-else statement, to check for your monster role, your blueprint would become very dirty very quickly. What you want to do instead is use a switch on enum. Here you can have a different functionality for each branch and it's a lot more compact. As an additional tip, you can also switch on string. Especially when working in VR, you sometimes get settings from the engine as a string, so this can come in handy. Number 4. Straighten your nodes and connections. If you do a quick implementation, you might end up with something like this where your nodes and connections don't align properly. You can just drag your nodes with the mouse or use the arrow keys on the keyboard to align them. However, sometimes this is not enough. In this situation, your line will never be straight no matter how much you move the node around. Click the first node, hold control and click the second node, then press Q to straighten the alignment. When you have multiple nodes selected, you can also right click a node and bring up the alignment menu. Here you have multiple options to align your nodes. The ones I mostly use is Align Center and Straighten Connection. Number 5. Keep your node layout consistent. I see a lot of people that like having these small nodes on top of the big ones or put them below. And there's no real right or wrong here, it's personal preference. But just make sure that it's consistent throughout all of your blueprints and that your team agrees on it. This is just my personal preference, but I prefer to keep the small nodes on the left side. Number 6. Make many functions rather than having your nodes just out on the graph. At the bottom you can see we neatly collapsed everything into functions, but at the top we have this very long horizontal line of nodes. You can simply make a new function on the left panel of your blueprint or select all the nodes you want to collapse into the function, right click and select collapse to function. An added bonus is that we can now create local variables that only exist inside of this function, which will help us keep the blueprint even cleaner. The variable camera xy is only used inside of this function anyway, so we will delete it from our global variables and add it as a local variable. Number 7. Collapse nodes. Here you can see that after our event tick we have a sequence and a bunch of functions on each branch. This is already looking pretty clean, but we can make it better by selecting all of them, right clicking and use collapse nodes. Now all of our tick functionality is neatly arranged inside of this collapsed node. With collapsed graphs, there are a few things you need to be careful with though. For example, if we have an execution pin as an output. Now we can append other nodes after this collapsed graph. However, in some cases they might not be executed. For example, if we have branching logic inside and there is an outcome where we don't call our output, the execution will stop and our following nodes won't be executed. In this case, it would be better to just make a sequence and put the following nodes on a different branch. This way you can make sure they will definitely be executed. You can also collapse nodes inside of functions to make them more readable. However, one thing you need to be careful with is that we will lose access to our local variables that only exist inside of this function. You need to pass the local variables in as a pin that you want to use inside of this collapsed graph. So in this case this wouldn't really make our blueprint more tidy, so you need to know when to use nodes and when to not use them. Here I would have probably just used the comment instead, which is a topic I'll talk about later. You can also collapse nodes of an entire section of your event graph into a collapsed graph. This way your event graph won't be unorganized, but you can put everything into different categories. Number 8. Set timer by function name. Let's imagine a scenario when, where we click the left mouse button we want to shoot, have a small delay and then reload. When we copy paste these nodes inside of a function, we run into the issue that the delay node is not being copied. Unreal Engine doesn't allow delay nodes inside of functions anymore because this caused many issues in the past. Instead we can use set timer by function name. Inside of the function name we simply type in reload and this will call our reload function after the 0.5 second delay. 
When using this, the functionality is still the same as delay, but we can neatly put our nodes inside of a function. Number 9. The Select node. You will often run into a situation where you only want to change a single value depending on an enum or a boolean. So instead of making a branch or a switch, just using a select node for that one value might be cleaner. In this case we want to change the base damage depending on what monster type we have. If we use the switch case here instead we would have 4 branching paths and the apply damage node would also be there 4 times. We can also do the same thing using a boolean instead of using a branch. This way again we'll only have the apply damage node once instead of twice. Number 10. Use comments. If you select multiple nodes and press the C button, a comment will be created around them. Comments help you break up your nodes visually and put them into categories. You can use comments in most places in Unreal Engine, out in your event graph, inside of functions, in your animation graph, and even in your behavior trees. A good practice when writing comments is to use prefixes like temp, fix me, to do, optimize, and there's also some others. This is actually a well-established pattern with many programming languages and supported in some IDEs and code editors. This will let your future self and your other team members know that a part of code is still not finished. Number 11. Use custom events to organize your event graph. Custom events basically work like functions, but they are on your event graph. This means that you can use delay nodes, timelines, and other timing-specific nodes. In this case, we subscribe to an event dispatcher, which already needs a custom event. However, if we have multiple dispatchers on top, we don't want to have all of our nodes up there. So we make yet another custom event to bring our nodes down into a separate part. Number 12. Actor Components An actor component is best used for a functionality you want to share between many different actors. This could be something like an inventory system or like in this case an explosion effect. Instead of having the variables for explosion damage, radius and the explosion function inside the bullet, we instead have these on the explosion component. This will allow us to use the same component for rocket launchers, grenade launchers and even enemies that come close to you and explode on contact. I previously made a video on how to implement rocket launchers in Unreal Engine. If you want to see how a simple explosion component is made, you can check it out. Number 13. Blueprint Function Libraries Blueprint function libraries are great for functionality you don't want to be tied to a specific object. In different programming languages you would usually call these helper or utility functions. You simply need to create a blueprint function library and add some functions to it. These can then be called from all of your blueprints. Number 14. Parent and Child Inheritance Inheritance isn't an Unreal Engine specific thing, but a core concept of object-oriented programming. So to get a better understanding of how you could use this to your advantage in your games, deepening your understanding of object-oriented programming is very important. To create a child class, simply right-click an actor and create child blueprint class. This blueprint will have the exact same functionality as its parent, however you can do things such as exchange the mesh, change the default variable values, and overwrite functions. You can also add new variables and functions on top of this. This is a very loaded topic and would need a separate video to go into detail. Number 15. Plugins On the Unreal Engine Marketplace you can find some plugins that make organizing your blueprints easier. The one I stumbled upon is called Electronic Nodes. I still haven't used this one, but after looking at it I'm quite interested. It seems like this plugin doesn't affect your project files, but only changes how the lines are rendered on your end. So if you work in a team, the blueprints you create will still look dirty to your other team members. So make sure to still follow all the principles we talked about before. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope you learned a thing or two about how to keep your blueprints clean. See you in the next video.